In today's video, I want to give you the rundown on No Man's Sky's latest massive free expansion. It is called No Man's Sky Beyond. We got a brand new trailer for it. And the PlayStation blog has an in-depth post on it as well. We got to talk all about that as No Man's Sky has been one of those games that has made a miraculous comeback. And I want to give that game the credit it deserves. Also, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is getting a light version in Japan on March 20th. It's a free-to-play version of the game. I know all of you guys are busy with Dragon Ball Fighters these days, but Xenoverse 2 definitely offers a different kind of experience. Experience, and now Japan is going to get a free offering of it. Could that make a transition stateside? We shall see. Also, now there are rumblings that PlayStation 5's next-gen PSVR headset could possibly work wirelessly. That is coming off of a new patent, and I want to take a look at exactly what that patent says. Also, we talked about that rumor about Sony picking up Take-Two. That would include Rockstar Games 2K. It just seemed a little hard to believe, and Sony is outright denying the rumor. And lastly, I do want to go over a pretty interesting remaster that's been confirmed for the PlayStation 4, and that is Sniper Elite V2. More on that at the end of this video. First, let's talk all about No Man's Sky Beyond, as that has been confirmed to be the latest expansion to No Man's Sky, and it's going to be yet another free update. Sean Murray made a pretty in-depth post over at the PlayStation blog, and I want to read a little bit about that. He said this, quote, Earlier this year, while working on our roadmap of three future updates, we decided we wanted to interweave their features and have a vision for something much more impactful. We are excited to announce that No Man's Sky Beyond will contain those three major updates rolled into a larger free release. The first component of Beyond we are announcing today is No Man's Sky Online. No Man's Sky Online includes a radical new social multiplayer experience which empowers players everywhere in the universe to meet and play together. While this brings people together like never before and has many recognizable online elements, we don't consider No Man's Sky to be an MMO. It won't require a subscription, won't contain microtransactions, and will be free for all existing players. These changes are an answer to how we've seen people playing since the release of Next and is something we've dreamed of for a very long time. We will talk about each component when we know we can be precise and look forward to sharing more in the coming weeks. Beyond will be our most ambitious chapter so far and something we've been working ridiculously hard on will continue to support No Man's Sky in this way for the foreseeable future. It's unexpected but so rewarding to see many accolades and nominations for No Man's Sky as best ongoing or most evolved this year. To some, Next may have felt like a natural end point for our journey but for us it was another step on a larger voyage. So wow, a lot to digest there, No Man's Sky Beyond will be coming with three massive updates rolled into one expansion and it will be coming sometime in the summer. No Man's Sky is one of those games that man, if you checked out this game back in 2016 when it originally released, you remember how big of a train wreck it was. People were just bashing the game left and right. But now you see what the experience has become in 2019, it has become a rather compelling experience and that's why I say if you look down on games like Fallout 76 and other games that don't turn out so great from the get go, Anthem is another perfect example. Yes, it's not great that those games aren't good from the get-go, however, because I've seen the turnaround that a game like No Man's Sky has made, we've seen it with Final Fantasy XIV, ESO, that if these developers stay committed to these projects, they can turn out to be very compelling, and in the case of No Man's Sky, it's all been free updates, and it looks like Beyond is going to be yet another free update, and this one's going to have three massive updates rolled into one expansion, and these days, No Man's Sky is available relatively cheap. I mean, if you compare what we paid $60 for back in 2016 to what we're paying, what, $20 for now? It's pretty night and day. You're paying a third of the cost for a far, far superior game. It's great to see that Hello Games didn't give up on No Man's Sky, and now it's being received rather well. If you just remember the reception this game had in 2016, I would have never thought that it could have turned out to be what it is today, but it's great to see... And it goes to show that games can make a gigantic turnaround and No Man's Sky's turnaround will continue with No Man's Sky Beyond again. That'll be coming sometime this summer. Moving on from that, recently we talked about Dead or Alive 6 getting a free component. Well, now it has been confirmed that Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 will also be getting a free component. And Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 Lite, that's coming to the PlayStation 4 March 20th in Japan. Bandai Namco will release a free-to-play version of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 titled Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 Lite. For PlayStation 4 on March 20th, the latest issue of monthly V-Jump reveal. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 Lite will let players be experience the beginning of the story, parallel quests, photo mode, my raids, online battles, and all of Hero Coliseum. All data from Xenoverse 2 Lite can be transferred into the full game, and Xenoverse 2, of course, is available right now for the PS4, but available pretty cheap. But if you want a free offering, Japan will be getting that on March 20th. Now, will we be getting that stateside? Probably, I would imagine at some point this will be coming to the states as well. At this point, Xenoverse 2 has been a little forgotten about, so I think it's a great idea to offer a free component to that game, especially because if you're a fan of Dragon Ball games, a lot of you guys have moved on to Dragon Ball Fighters. Now, Fighters mechanically is a far different game. Xenoverse 2 is more of an 
arcade style fighting experience, while Fighters is more of your traditional fighting game experience. Again, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 Lite will be hitting PlayStation 4 March 20th in Japan. If we hear anything about a Western release, we will keep you guys posted. Moving on from that, of course, everyone knows that the PlayStation 5 is currently in development. It'll probably be released at the end of 2020, but one of the major questions heading into the PS5's release is gonna be whether or not PlayStation VR works on PS5 and how PSVR is gonna evolve on the PlayStation 5. Well, a new PSVR patent has been published in Japan that shows the device working wirelessly. Specifically, it suggests a frequency band determination device, a head mount display, a frequency band determination method, and program capable of switching a frequency band used for communication earlier than before, according to a change in an environment in which communication device or a communication partner is placed. There's a lot of images attached as well, a lot of it goes over my head, but it does point towards some sort of wireless connectivity for the PlayStation VR headset, which I think would be absolutely massive. The main issue with PSVR, I think, is the jumbled setup of it. It's a great device, it's an accessible device as far as pricing goes, and in terms of VR pricing, hey, it's the most accessible that you're gonna find. However, it is just a mess to set up, and in terms of being accessible to the most casual of gamers, Having a wireless headset would be a lot more beneficial. Now, the issue is a lot of us have already dropped, you know, three, four hundred dollars on our PSVR headset. Are we really going to be willing to drop another three, four hundred on the PSVR 2 or whatever it's called for the PlayStation 5? It depends on what the game library is. If it does go wireless, if it does have a lot of improvements, but buying a VR headset every generation along with the console, that's a little bit of a bummer, but we shall see how it turns out. If the headset is wireless, I think a lot of gamers would be all over it. Next up, we talked a lot about Sony possibly picking up Take 2. That report was going around, and I had talked about how I was super skeptical of it. Just because of the magnitude of a publisher that Take 2 was, you're not just talking about Rockstar, which that alone is massive. You're talking about 2K games as well, and 2K sports. And I just wasn't sure if Sony would be capable of doing something like that. Well, in a new quote given to Venture Beat, a spokesperson for Sony outright stated, quote, We do not know where the rumor is coming from, but there is no such plan. So I think that should put the Take 2 rumors to bed for now. I mean, even if there is a a grain of truth to the rumor. I guess this is what Sony would probably say, but at the same time, whenever rumblings like this would happen, it would be more of a case of we don't comment on rumors or anything like that. In this case, Sony is outright denying it, so that leads me to believe that there's probably not a lot of truth to this. We'll see how it develops. Again, Take-Two stock did see a surge. A lot of people were buying into this. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Sony has any plans to buy Take-Two, and honestly, that's probably for the best. You'd want every gamer possible to play Rockstar games, to play 2K games, to play 2K sports titles. It should not be confirmed find to just one platform. And lastly, I do want to give you guys a heads up that Sniper Elite V2 is going to be remastered for the PlayStation 4. Now, Sniper Elite V2 is actually considered by many to be the best game in the franchise. And Sniper Elite V2 remaster will bring 1945 Berlin to current platforms with stunning new visuals and a host of new features, including enhanced graphics, assassinate the Fuhrer, all DLC included, new playable characters, frame-by-frame -frame photo mode, and more. Sniper Elite V2 remastered is scheduled to come sometime in 2019. We don't have a price point for it yet, but anything over $29.99, I think, would be a little bit too expensive. This is an older title. It's a pretty niche title at that. If it's priced at $39.99, $49.99, or God forbid, $59.99, that would be an absolute train wreck. $29.99 or less would be perfect for it. Honestly, I would ideally like a $19.99 price point, but that might be me just being a little bit too cheap, but that is coming sometime in 2019. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, No Man's Sky is getting a huge new expansion in Beyond. It's rolling three massive updates into one. All we know about right now is No Man's Sky Online, which includes a radical new social and multiplayer experience. But more details are going to be rolled out in the coming weeks. A free-to-play Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 experience is coming in Japan with Xenoverse 2 Lite. Could the next-gen PlayStation VR and PSVR 2 be wireless? A new patent is suggesting so. That would be awesome. As far as Take-2 being acquired by Sony, that is looking unlikely at this point. But we'll see how that story develops and Sniper Elite V2 Remastered is coming to the PlayStation 4. It'll be running in 4K and it'll be coming sometime in 2019. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.